What's going on? It's Keyshawn. Welcome to a new episode of my show, The Undisputed Presents All Facts, No Breaks podcast. Joining us today is an ASU, that's Arizona State Sun Devil, great, two-time Super Bowl champion, seven-time Pro Bowler, and the 2011 NFL Defensive Player of the Year, no one other than T. Sizzle Terrell Suggs. What's happening, my man? Long time no talk, no see. Good, man. I know, it's been a minute. No, it's, it's been, been a minute. minute. It's that? been a real minute. What what have you been up to these days? Man, I've just been, just been chilling, man, hanging out. Uh-huh. Um, you know, like I said, you know, it's a good time to, to be a parent now. You know what I mean? So both of my kids are in high school and in sports. So that's pretty much my my days, man, is, in, is embarrassing my children. Yeah, let's, let's dive right into it, uh, T. So... You're the Ravens' all-time franchise leader in sacks, which I had to think. I was trying to think, well, who else could there be? You know, obviously, Sugar Bear gets a lot of credit in Ray Lewis, but he he going to uh-huh. blitz once or twice a game, maybe get a sack, maybe yeah. get a half a sack. But then when you look at you being the sack leader and recently inducted into the ring of honor, take me mm-hmm. behind the scenes or take us behind the scenes and, and just share with us how that moment felt knowing that you was getting ready to go up in the ring of honor with the likes of a Ray Lewis and the Ozzy Newsom and company. Man, it was a very flattering, humble experience, man. They brought in all the greats, you know, the, the, the legendary Raven greats, you know, the guys that I played with, J.O. was there. Uh, A.D. came back. Uh, you know, of course, Ray, you know, uh, uh, Ed didn't make it. But, you know, he had some family issues, which we all get now as former players. It's pretty much we're parents first now. You know what I mean? But it was just an honor, man. And, and to have, like, Ozzy, you know, the man who drafted me kind of be the man who inducts me. You know what I mean? It's just it all came full circle. It was very humbling. And it was just a dope experience. You know? No, I bet you I, I'll never be inducted into a ring of honor because I played on too many teams, but <laughs> that, that was, as they say, that was my own undoing. People out there, they want to know, T-Sizzle, where did the the nickname T-Sizzle come from? Like, where did it come from? Well, it came from my cousin. You know what I mean? This was in the early 2000s when, you know, Snoop Dogg kind of started the Izzles and the Bizzles, and you know what I mean? When my cousin, Damar, he played basketball at Idaho State, and they were calling, his name is Damar Sugg, so... They were calling him D Sizzles, you know. What I mean, me naturally being his younger cousin and playing at Arizona State at the time, it's like it just kind of fit. It rolled over. He was D Sizzle, I was T Sizzle, and it kind of just took off, you know, from college from there. I mean, it, that was a long time ago, man. And people don't like they when they see me now, they be like Sizzle, but it, it's shortened up, man. It just says now, but that's where the genesis of the name came from. Is actually it was my cousin's name first. And it kind of just took off. So everybody that plays sports with the last name Suggs naturally took on the name Sizzle. T. Shizzle, my... No, no, no I ain't going to say that word. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, T, you retired officially in 2020, right? So you get yeah. ready to come up on your eligibility to be yeah. in the Hall of Fame alongside Ray Lewis and eventually some other counterparts on the defensive side of the ball to get in as well. How important will it be to you, though, to get... What's more important, to get in or be a first ballot Hall of Famer in getting in? I think they go hand in hand, Keyshawn, be totally honest with you. Like, you want to be first ballot. And, like, I try... Like, I shy away from this question all the time. I try not to think about it because, you know, you know, T.O. had to wait, like, three times. And, and, you know, Terrell Owens, every... All of us that know football and play football know Terrell Owens should have been a first ballot yeah, Hall but, of Famer. Yeah, but, 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 but we know why that happened, though, right? I mean, you, yeah, you don't we, have we that resume. That That's happened. not on your resume. I know, but it, it still can happen. It still has happened. And, you know, Prime has, has told us, you know, horrific stories about guys who they were up and just didn't get the knock on the door. So, I'm, I, I'm like I said, all the time, I shy away from this question. I'd be like, yeah, it's coming up. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to think about it. You know what I mean? It's like you, you want to be first ballot. You want to yeah. be first ballot. It's kind of like it, it's just you want to get picked when you're eligible. You know what I mean? You don't want to wait. You want to wait long sitting in the room. You know, I wish, you know, I I, I had like one of those resumes of like, oh, so he's automatic going in. Like he, I didn't play it in 
10 Super Bowls and won seven of them type thing. Like, oh, yeah, they didn't have nothing to worry about. I'm pretty sure Ray and Ed didn't have nothing to worry about. J.O., Ozzy. And I'm just like, Man, you ain't got you don't you don't have nothing to worry about. You're just making yourself I'll, panic, though. You just you don't want to jinx know, yourself. I don't think, but you because it's coming up. No, nah, I mean you, you know won two mean? Super Bowls. You won yeah. two. You was a dominant force yeah. on the defense. You lead you 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 the, the the franchise leader in sacks. Okay, so that's that's the that's the team situation. Now when you talk yeah. about going across the water and eating pineapple, what you got seven Pro Bowls under your belt? Yeah, you got seven, got seven. Pro Bowls. Defensive player of the year. Ain't no way in the world. No, hell no. Ain't no way in the Man. world you're going to have to wait. You never know how the, how the votes go. No, nah, not going to happen. I, mean? I don't know not gonna happen. who else is eligible, you know, around that time. No, Maybe does, a does that not matter. Does not matter. You're not so, going to wait. No, nah, you're not going to wait. I hope wait. so. And you talk like, about... Just, go ahead. We won't know until next year. Yeah, yeah. You got a, you know, you got a 12-month waiting period coming up, but you're going to be all yeah. right. I, I trust that you're gonna I'm be all right. So. so when you I'm look at so. when you look at as we talk about these Hall of Famers, and I'm gonna give you a two part question here: the top five pass rushers, the ones that you saw. Don't be giving me no Deacon Jones and all that because you didn't see Deacon right. play. The ones that you saw, top five all time, and then the second top five in today's game, pass rushing. You know the T.J. Watts of the world, so on, so on. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Top five that like I like played against that I was, I was like wet, like or like from the nineties before. No, the, I got top, the top five that you seen play in the National Football League at the time, like all time, as the Derek Thomas is the Reggie oh, okay. Whites, those type of dudes. And I okay. say don't give me Deacon Jones because you didn't see him play. Because I didn't see them. Yeah. Right. Well, you got to throw like you said Derek Thomas and LT in there, uh, Reggie White, Bruce Smith. You only get five now. Don't be giving me 20. I only get five. But I, I, I would go with those. How many is that? Four? Yeah. I got to throw Julius Peppers in there, man. Like, Pep, yeah. Pep, like, I don't think he get enough credit. Pep don't get enough credit. And I think he he's still, I think he's like in the top five of all time in sacks in the league. So you got to throw Pep in there. The White was another one. There's, there's, there's a lot of pass rushers that that, like, people just don't talk about. You know, Dwight Freeney, you know, John Abraham, he, like, dominated, you know what I mean, the game. I mean, I think you played with John in New York. No, you know no, no, they, tra they traded me. They traded me and used one of the two picks, I think, to pick up Abraham. But, no, really? I played against him, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it's been, a, it's been a lot, man. But I would say those top five, LT, Derek Thomas, Reggie White, uh, Bruce Smith, Julius Peppers. I, I, I think that I've seen. I will give it to them. Now, in the game today, of course, T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett. You know I love my young boys, you know, Matt Judon and, and, and Zadarius Smith. But you, they didn't have, they, they've been injured all year, so I guess we can't count them. So T.J. Watt, uh, the Bosa kid, and um, – Which Bosa? And, and, Nick, and Nick or Joey? Joey. No, no, no. Which one is the uh Nick the Nick, Nick is okay. Nick is the Nick is the 49ers. Okay, so Nick. Nick. Joey's Joey's still good too. <laughs> Joey's still good too. <laughs> yeah, no, he's go, still he's still solid. Yeah. Um Miles Garrett, Khalil Mack, and um my boy, White Chocolate in, in Vegas. In Vegas? Like, uh, oh, you're talking about uh Crosby. Yes. Max Crosby. But you missing Max somebody, Crosby. though. You missing yeah, somebody. Uh -huh. You missing somebody, and I know you missed him not on purpose. It just went over your head. Who, Von, MBK? Von Miller. Von Miller? He Von slowed, been hurt no, he slowed, but he slowed down. He slowed I mean, down. age gets us all. Age gets yeah. us all. I think Von, I think Von, like, you know, the, the trouble when, when you go to a different team, you know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of got to, like, the 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 coordinators like you usually get coordinators that that got your best of interest in hand at all times, and then you go to different teams and the coordinator just oh I want to focus on the defense as a whole, you know what I mean? So we don't know what really the situation is with Vaughn up there in Buffalo. You know, I mean, I mean, it's fair to say we haven't seen the same Vaughn that he was like when he was in Denver 
and when he was in LA with the Rams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, he's been hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, he's still a phenomenal talent. And we all know age gets us all, but injuries is part of it too. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I think, you know, especially in the past couple of years, those, those guys that I've mentioned are just a little bit ahead of mine just because of the injuries. Yeah. You know what I mean? What about Michael Parsons yeah. for Dallas? I like him. I like him a lot. And I, like you said, that, that just flew over my head because I knew if I didn't say, um, uh, Nick Bosa, because I think he had 19 or something last year. So I know if I didn't say him, like I probably would have got some flack over it. But yeah, I like Parsons. Um, he, he's definitely, he, he's, I'm surprised like he hasn't won a defensive player of the year yet. You know what I mean? I think what he in his second year. And his, no, he in his, he, 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 he going in his foot, fifth year, fourth year. Fourth really? Year. Yeah. No, I don't think he's that old. I yeah. think he's in his third. Year. No, uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. Because nope. remember they they went to the playoffs in his 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 rookie year. Yeah, this is start. This is the end of his third year. He's going into his fourth. This is the end of his third. Yeah, he's okay. going into he go, he's going into his fourth season. What's the most sacks yeah. you had? What's the most sacks you had in a year? Fourteen. I only had but fourteen. You, had probably, one you you probably had double digits though for a while. Yeah, like I like the you know the one thing when I came into the league, Adalis Thomas told me, he was like, you just don't want to be known as a stat, I mean, a sack guy. Yeah. You want to fill up the stat sheet. You know what I mean? You want fumbles, you want interceptions, you want tackles, you want it all. And like, he said that to me, like in the first week of me being in the building, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Kind of like stuck with me through all my career. And I was just like, I forgot, yeah, I, I, I forgot I what be in every- game, forgot what game you got a pick in, but it was an ugly pick. It was just, it was like, <laughs> you, you fight the ball. Know. It was running I ha- uh, high all ass and all. Pick, it was all ugly. wasn't that good. No, like, was... You got to understand. <laughs> when you got Superman behind you, he picking off everything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, when you get one, well, you kind of just got to grab it before he do. You know what I yeah. mean? So, it, it, it's, uh, all my picks were ugly. I only had one good looking one, and that was against Miami and OE. Yeah, it was one, it was something. I'm trying to think. I was I was thinking about it. I was like, I remember. I was like, man, that's an ugly ass pick. You you it was a, it was an out. You got underneath, you buzzed underneath the, like an out. But when you picked uh, it, you looked so uncoordinated and it was just It was Detroit. It might have been it was Detroit. Detroit no I'm five. like, Ugh. It was Detroit no five. I actually got through out of that game. <laughs> okay. I got a pick. I got a pick, got through out of the game. We had 21 penalties. We like Set an NFL record or something for penalties on defense. Yeah, like it was it was a real nasty game, and they slapped us. So, yeah, normally, yeah. normally, uh, T, my my son Keyshawn Junior joins the show with us, and instead we got Javion who's gonna bring us in on some other topics real quick for us. What's up? Terrell? All right, bring us in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get right into the NFL, Terrell. You're an all times Ravens great. So we want you to weigh in on this first. With the second MVP, will Lamar Jackson be considered the greatest Raven of all time? No. He's got a he's he, he's he, even with an MVP, he would have to bring the city more championships than Ray Lewis and, and Jonathan Ogden. Okay. To kind of to kind of take that throne, but he's in a running. He's in a run and like I was watching, you know, the playoff game against Houston and, you know, he's probably going to win the MVP. And then I was thinking to myself, like, if, if they go down the glory and take the whole thing, he's probably going to knock me off the rock Mount Rushmore. It's, it's, it's probably going to happen. It's, it's evident. You know what I'm saying? Because people ask like, oh, who's on a Mount Rushmore Raven? They go, they instantly go Ray Lewis, Jonathan Ogden, Ed Reed. And then, like, that fourth spot is, like, muddle between myself, Marshall Yonda, Justin Tucker, and, and Hello Odinata. But Justin ain't none Tucker? of us got two oh, no, you mean You mean Tuck the kicker? Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. Justin Tucker? He yeah, kicked. Justin Tucker. So, like, DeMar, I mean, Lamar is going to get, like, a second league MVP this year. And if he ends up, I mean, with that alone, I think that probably, like, knocks me off. But as that's not a bad, you know what I'm saying? That's not a bad person to get knocked off by. But he's, he's probably going to definitely be on the Mount Rushmore of all-time Ravens greats. I just got to, you know, fall in line, man. 
Yeah, and you know, as you was talking about it, I was thinking about it. And I remember when the Ravens were going to trade for me. Instead, I went to Tampa instead of uh, going over there uh -huh. with, with Sugar Bear and them because it just I uh -huh. wasn't I wasn't I, I wasn't trying to block we all day long. I wasn't, wasn't trying to, I was like, not trying block to block, man. You ain't for the block. Well, nah, we weren't throwing the ball. Nah, like all day that. long. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, <laughs> but when you look at it, Ray Lewis, how he came in and Jonathan Ogden came in to Baltimore, two two picks for Ozzie Newsom in a in a mm -hmm. transition from Cleveland to Baltimore. They could become two Hall of Famers, two Super Bowl titles. It's like, nah, he's gonna have to win. He's going to have to win at least three Super Bowls. Three he's going to win three. Yeah, he gonna he's going have to, have to win, win three. to win three to be the greatest. Yeah, to be yeah. the greatest. He's going to have to win three. Two ain't going to do it because Ray two Lewis kind of, Ray got that sold up. Ray, Ray got two, yeah. And, you know, J.O. Is the, is the greatest offensive tackle ever. You know what I'm saying? His, his hand is not going to be a better left tackle than Jonathan Ogden. And, you know, I, you could tell him I said it. And I, I'm, I'm standing on that. But, um, yeah, like he he would have to, like we said, he would have to not only get you know at least one or two more MVPs, but he definitely gonna have to have three Super Bowl rings to be considered the greatest Raven ever. It's gonna be hard. I mean, Ray Lewis got a statue outside of the stadium. How many football yeah, Ray, players got statues? Ray got Ray brought something. It was just different. I, I obviously I came into the league with Ray in yeah. in. Um, you know, we were on Playboy All American team in college together. In fact, I got Ray Lewis's jersey from college. He has mine from college. I got his helmet. He has my helmet. Um, he brought a dance pre introductions to the league that just mm -hmm. it, well, I couldn't even begin to think about doing it because it's crazy. That city, look, he, he, every time he do it, the city go on fire. Oh, it was on Ray fire. Been retired for up here. Yeah, it was Ray, on fire. Yeah. Ray been retired for 12 years. Anytime he come out and he hit that dead city, is going crazy. That city is his, man. And, and like the thing, like how he just kind of like took the city on his back when he got there. And not only that, he established the culture yeah. amongst other defensive players coming into the league, like coming on to coming into that organization. Like, ain't no, it's going to be very hard to knock that man off. Raise the go. All right, we're going to move yeah. on. It's time for a segment we like to call Facts or Fiction. Lamar Jackson right. and Patrick Mahomes are set to face off this championship weekend. Recently on First Things First, Nick Wright answered whether Lamar versus Mahomes is the new Manning versus Brady. Take a listen. And this is not disrespectful to Lamar. I don't think Mahomes has a rival. That's correct. It's it's a Tiger Phil situation. It's a Gretzky right Lemieux Messier situation where there is a clear cut, unquestioned best, and then that doesn't mean they win every year. That doesn't, you know what I mean? That doesn't mean you're going to go undefeated against these guys. Doesn't mean their trophy <clears throat> case is going to be empty. But there's not a rivalry. Key, let's start with you. Is Nick spitting facts or fiction here? Well, I think. <laughs> I think he's spitting facts because there isn't a rivalry right now between the two. And once he takes care of business, Lamar, that is, takes care of business this Sunday against Patrick Mahomes, then you can start that conversation because he'll most likely have two MVPs. I'm betting that he goes and he wins the Super Bowl, so he'll have one to two. He'll have one trip. That record will then be four and three in the postseason opposed to two and three. And it just, it, it'll start. You know, that it, it'll start. That process will start. Suggs, what do you think? I agree. I, I think uh, Keyshawn, he, he hit all the, 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 the key facts. It's, it's a simple fact that they really only played each other in, you know, the regular season. And, um, like, like, Patrick Mahomes has excelled, like, in the playoffs. He has more playoff wins than Lamar at this point. And like they said, you know, like Patrick Mahomes, he has two um, Super Bowl rings, played in three. Lamar hasn't played in any yet. You know what I'm saying? So like like Keyshawn said, one, if, if Lamar handled business this year, then it would start because, you know, they're the two of the premier quarterbacks, not only, you know, in the AFC, but in the league. And as long as the two are on these two teams, they're going to keep running into each other. You know what I'm saying? So eventually the rivalry will start. But I don't think it's there yet. 
Hey, Suggs, when they when when the Baltimore Ravens drafted Lamar and they, you know, they were like, oh, you should go play another position. He should do this. He should do that. As an <clears throat> all-time great Raven, when they drafted him, what, what like what did you say? You like I thought I thought it was dope. Like everybody knows, like I'm um I'm I'm pro, you know, I'm, I'm pro Joe Flacco. You know what I'm saying? Because I've, I've never been a champion until Joe Flacco came into the team. And uh, we knew it was Ozzy's last draft, so everybody's kind of seeing what Ozzy was going to do. And, like, you know, we had our first round, and then Ozzy jumps back up in the first round to go get him. Now, I'm not sure if uh, the plan was for, you know, Lamar to come in and, and take Joe's spot like he did. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I think it was more like of a mentor, and then when we will cross that bridge when we get to it type thing, it's kind of like – you know, let him get, be behind Joe, kind of learn how to play the game. But Lamar got there, man, and just – he was just exciting. He was just exciting to play. And that was where the game, you know, went with the RPOs. You know what I mean? And and that fit Lamar's, you know, style of play to a T. You know what I mean? And it ended up – it ended up working out for him. You know what I mean? And it, it was a good – it was a good fun year. It was a good fun year. You know? The NFL recently posted Dan Campbell speaking on what it means to represent the hardworking city of Detroit. Watch this. Well, I think it's important, right? I mean, you can't, I don't know if it's, you know, it's not the first thing you think of if you go to LA or just in general, right? You got the sun, you got the beach, you got plenty of other things going on in here, man. And it's harsh winters, right? Auto industry, blue collar, um, things aren't always easy. Um, and I just think that's, you know, that's what we we're about. And that, that was, you know, you want something the city can be proud of though. You can look at those guys and say, man, I can back that guy. I can back that team. You know, I can resonate with those group of guys. Um, you know, they're kind of salty, you know, they, they don't quit. They play hard. Um, and so I feel like we've done that. And I think these guys, you know, they have a kinship with this city and this area. And they love it, man. And ultimately, that's what you want. Terrell, you play for the similar blue-collar city of Baltimore. Is there any extra added motivation on your playoff run in representing a gritty, hard-working city? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when the, when the team kind of has the same identity and the personality of the city. You know what I'm saying? Uh, teams like that were very tough to beat in January, you know, and um, it's like, yeah, you want, you take pride and, you know, we, we're not all Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? We, hey, hey, man, watch we, out, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm sorry, Keisha. I know y'all had, y'all, y'all was loving life out there at SC, you know what I'm saying? In Cali, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying like, it, it, it's, it's a, you know, you know how football is. It's a sense of pride. You know what I mean? And like I said, when, the, when your team kind of takes on the personality of the city and it, it's just like, you know, it's a mirror, you know what I mean? Like everybody know, what you, when you come to Baltimore, what kind of game you're going to get? You know what I mean? What style of play? And that's exactly how the city is, man. We blue collar. We're we not flashy. We're down with that bump and grind, even though Lamar is making it flash. It, it's definitely some lights in, in Baltimore now. Guys, take a listen to who Gronk listed as one of the most feared players he faced in the NFL. Hint, Keyshawn, he not talking about you. <laughs> Who are the most like fearful or like guys you've played against like that are linebackers? Terrell Suggs, man. Terrell oh, Suggs was Beast. a maniac, bro. Just absolute maniac. I mean, guy had arms that were like this he was size, huge. like huge. I mean, strong, mean looking, came came with some attitude every single game, talk shit in the media, saying he's gonna rip off Tom's head, saying he's gonna rip our offensive <laughs> linemen apart, rip our helmets off, just whatever he could possibly say to get, you know, to get into your skin. Terrell, what's your reaction to hearing another great like Gronk listing you as somebody to fear on the gridiron? Man, that's that's real flattering because, you know, when you play against, you know, guys that got names and stuff, you're like, I, I definitely wanted to be an asshole against, you know, to him. You know what I mean? I wanted to to be as as as, as gritty as I can and, you know, getting real physical. And these are the these are the Patriots. You know what I'm saying? These are they, they dominated. You know what I mean? The AFC for a long time. 
for for years. For years, everybody knows if you're in the AFC, you gotta go through New England. You know what I'm saying? And uh to kind of like get your flowers like that, you know, from another Hall of Famer, probably the best tight end ever, man. That's very flattering. You know what I mean? You want to be appreciated for the work that you do, even, you know, as an opponent. You know, me and Gronk, we ain't never been on the same team. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he'll know what Sills is really like. You know what I mean? Like outside of, you know, being an asshole. You know what I mean? Being on the <laughs> field. But get that kind of respect. Get that kind of respect, man. It's real flattering, though. Know? It's no, like... He- very humbling. When you when you are one of the best at what you are doing out on the field, I mean, like playing against Suggs, I don't. It, it's it's weird for certain people. Like th- these dudes, Ray Lewis and and T Suggs, as much shit as I would talk on the field, they not they not getting into confrontations with me. They trying to beat yeah. me. They trying to tackle me. They trying to pick me. But they not like. I don't know. It's so weird. It's just it's it's weird with yeah. certain guys in the league. It's the re- it's a certain respect right. that you have yeah. for that particular opponent. Keisha, you know? I know you didn't Absolutely. fear anybody, but who did you respect on game day? Oh, I respected all my opponents. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just oh, the, yeah. the bottom line. When I when when I played against the Ravens, I knew that Suggs, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, uh, I think Doorknob was there once at once upon a time. Uh Samori yeah. was there. Uh, yeah. uh Bart Scott. Thick neck, you know, all, all them, all them type of dudes. We just, it was, a, it's a respect thing, mm-hmm. right? In Rod yeah. Woodson, them type of guys, just all respect. It's no disrespect to nothing. Then there's other teams with other people and players that just get under your, get on your nerves because all they do is just be taught. No, they don't do shit on the field, but they just be running their mouth. And those are the ones yeah. you be like, man, come on, man, this dude here. Man, you getting your head <laughs> bashed in right now? You still talking? Still talking? You know, and yeah. so. It's always a respect thing, though. All right. Always. <laughs> Terrell, you established yourself in the league as a formidable presence. But when was your I'm him moment in the NFL? The moment you knew you were the baddest man on the field? I don't think I ever had one of those. Mm. I think, like, because I, I, I was big on my support and cast. Like, you got to understand, I had dogs around me, mm-hmm. like, like, no matter what kind of year we were having, we had dogs on defense. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it's not like I took it as I'm him. I took it as part of like, yo, I'm part of this badass defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we had Elodie's and the Jared Johnson's and Kelly Gregg's. And of course, we had the general in the middle. You know what I mean? We had Ray Lewis. And then, you know, we had Jimmy Smith on the outside, Chris McAllister. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, Samari Rowe. Like, we had some guys, you know what I mean? We had the greatest safety ever. Mm-hmm. We had Superman in the back, Ed Reed. You know what I'm saying? And then we brought in Bernard Pollard. You know what I mean? And before that, before him, we had, you know, Dewan uh, Landry. Like, we've had guys on this team. Bart Scott. You know what I mean? Adelis Thomas. Like, we've had guys. No, y'all, y'all we've had sure full fledged guys on our team. You no, know what I mean? Had D. They, That's for sure. We they had, had D. We, 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 def- we had some ass kids. We had guys like, yo, this is a dark alley and it's going to be a fight down there. Look, look, we're going to go sprinting down it. You know what I mean? Like, yo, who want to fight? You know what I mean? It's pretty much us versus everybody. And that was kind of like the mentality we had. So I can't really pinpoint uh, I'm him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have one of those. It was just like my defense is him. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like every year it was between us and the Steelers, you know what I mean? Like, who who got the best defense? Whoever's going to have the best defense, whoever had the dominant defense when they play each other, that's who's going to win the game. And um, we kind of, like, took more pride in that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it wasn't really about one individual. It was about a unit and us, you know, achieving things as a, as a team. What, what, what uh, you made me think about when you mentioned the Steelers, Suggs, out of the other three teams in the division, which one did you – least like 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 the 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 Bengals the the Steelers uh I, the Browns uh, you hate them all you mm-hmm. hate them all and, and it's for this fact because we had the the most physical division in the whole league you know what I mean you're playing the Steelers twice a year and you kind of want to get those games out of the way you don't want to play them the first game and then you got to play them the last game like no you want to get those because that's going to be your two most physical games out of the year so you want to get that out of the way. Cincinnati, they were always good at, like, dialing us up. You know what I mean? They always 
played us hard. They always, you know what I mean? They all, I would say they had the most offensive success on us because, you know, they had Ocho and he, he just loved playing against us. Like, I, I, I don't get it. I'm like, dude, we're trying to kill you out here. Like, we're literally trying to kill you. And Ocho loved it. You know what I'm saying? And Cleveland, they had the resentment against us because we were their team. So naturally, they kind of feel some type of way like, okay, the team leaves and then you go draft Jonathan Ogden and Ray Lewis. So every time you play Cleveland, it's a dog fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was like Cleveland was just mad that Baltimore left and went on and went super, you know, we went on to win some Super Bowls and had some success and drafted a few Hall of Famers. And technically, we were their team. So, you know, Cleveland's always going to fight us. So you just hate them all. You're just like, oh, my God, we got to go to Cleveland this week. And you don't want to go to Cleveland in December. It's going to be cold on that lake. And they're they going to come out. If they don't even got a, you know, shot at the playoffs, if you do, they're going to try to knock you out. You know what I'm saying? So Cleveland is one of those rough blue-collar cities, too. Mm-hmm. So all all three teams. All right, guys, it's time for a segment we like to call Fact Check. We found this video of a story time Ed Reed told about the pettiest thing he experienced in the NFL. Watch this. The pettiest thing I've seen in the NFL. Terrell Suggs. Sizzle had got mad at me, actually, on the plane. We was on the plane. It's like late December around this time. He was talking to the teammates. I was asleep, half asleep, and I wake up, and I'm like, man, shut up, man. And he got mad and wanted to fight. And that turned into a crazy night. Real petty. Real petty, Sizzle. You remember that. So, uh, oh, oh my God. I knew, <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. I knew, I knew it. Terrell, can you fact check this on what really went down on the plane? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like 14 years ago now, so we can lay that out. So, you know, it was a West Coast trip. We try to get in the playoffs. We go play Oakland. So, you know, it, it, it's a five-hour flight. Like, actually, it's like six. It's a six-hour flight, and you go out there two days before. So, naturally, like, like I, I like, snuck some some alcohol onto the plane, like, in a Gatorade bottle, whatever. <laughs> Long story short, we had just beat um, Oakland to kind of, like, get in. We had just won to get into the playoffs in 09. And um, I had gotten drunk. And you know how you get when you talk. You know you get drunk. Um, you get drunk with just one. I'm just on there. I'm just talking shit to like everybody, you know, Ed Bill, you know, our big brother, one of the leaders on the team. He like, yo, sizzle, calm it down. You know what I mean? He had like woke up. I'm like, man, shut that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm on one. And basically he, was, he, he got, he got mad at me. He got mad at his little brother. And I was like, what's up then quick? Like, like, I'm basically like, let's, let's throw these hands. He's like, man, I'm not going to fight your big hand. I'll pop your big hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, quick, he ain't going to back down from nobody. And uh, long story short, it just basically, it like carried on. Like, I like chased him home in the winter, like trying to follow Harry home. It, it was, it wasn't just Ed. Like, I was just like yelling at a whole bunch of people. And Kelly Gregg instigating, he in my ear being that little, the little devil conscious, he's like, Sizzle, don't let him punk you, Sizzle. You know what I mean? Like, just totally, like, instigate. And I'm just talking shit, talking shit to Ed Reed. I'm talking to Troy Smith. Like, I was I was at everybody. But it calmed down. And uh, long story short, I had to apologize to Ed. And I'm like, look, man, I'm sorry. He's like, Sizzle, man, I know my little brother, man. He work out. But that was, like, the one and only time like me and Ed Reed and I, and I was 100% wrong. It was on me. I was drinking on the plane after a win. So, so wait, so why you had to yeah. sneak, why you had to sneak the alcohol on the plane? You didn't, y'all didn't have alcohol wasn't, the, alcohol wasn't allowed on our plane. We couldn't have them. We couldn't have it. So, you know, but it's a West Coast trip of a already kind of like down shitty year. Like we was in the AFC championship the year before. And then we come back and like we barely got in in 09. And it was just like, we were just kind of like celebrating. It was, it, alcohol wasn't allowed. Really? So I snuck them. I, 
Yeah, it wasn't allowed. Man, none of the team, none of the teams. Man, we used to be back there making apple martinis and stuff. Oh, oh my with god! The, with, no. the, with the Bars flight attendants. That. Every it team, like, man. Every team I ever played on, we never. I never felt like we had to sneak it. Man, yeah, we had to sneak ours. I was like, I don't, I don't. I, I just didn't want to find out. We had to sneak out, pour it right in the Gatorade bottle. Boo boo. Oh, we was good. We was Gucci. Yeah, no, we we had yeah them long them long West Coast East Coast trips. I yeah. was back there. I was back there bartending and everything. You the yeah, we back there, man, back there bartending, playing cards. Yeah, because getting lifted, man. Because remember, Especially. I was gonna say because I had remember I had restaurants and uh-huh. so yeah. I had access to all the equipment just in general. So we take a West mm-hmm. Coast trip, like when we would go to Oakland, back to New York, for instance, or Tampa. Oh yeah, man, the mixing is on. We. Ch- ch- Oh yeah, yeah we, we're that. getting it in. So nothing we're crazy happened in. on the plane for you, Keyshawn. Like with your teammates. I had a fight with a teammate uh, on the plane after nice. one of our games. Uh, you See? know, we we had just loaded the plane, and so I'm sitting next to to one of my 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 roommate, my crimey. Okay. I'm sitting next to him. So typically, it's somebody got the window. The middle seat is empty. And then somebody uh-huh. sits in the aisle, unless you got a whole mm-hmm. row to yourself or whatever the case is. I could have had a whole row. I don't know why I wasn't sitting in one. So I was asking my teammate what happened on a particular play mm-hmm. that was like, you know, what happened? How, who, who gave up that touchdown? So the dude that they hit the touchdown on was walking in the back of the plane, and he heard me talking. Uh-huh. And he started talking... <laughs> You know how that go. He 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 barely hit a conversation. He like, oh, don't be talking about me <laughs> with the whoop whoop whoop. And I happened to look, and he put his he put his hand. Oh, on your head. On my head. Uh-huh. I swear to God, man, on my on on my daughter's grade, he'll never do that again. Uh-huh. You ain't never seen a brother get up fast out of an economy seat so fast. And when I man. jumped up, when I jumped up, I grabbed him. When I jumped up, Sizzle, I grabbed him. In the next aisle, I done stuffed him underneath. It, was, it happened so fast. Everybody on the mm. plane, they couldn't believe that I would react that way because that's just <laughs> not my nature, right? I'm like, I'm right. supposed to be the cool dude, chill. Oh, he West Coast. He got flip-flops on. He ain't tripping. But once you put your hands on me. You got the dog out of you. Oh, it's a whole other situation. Yeah. He'll never do that yeah. again. I promise you that. I, w- I want to ask y'all, is there a seniority level on who gets to sit where on the plane? There, 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 yeah. there was on most of my teams. Yeah, there was. Yeah. You know, like some, a lot of, yeah, they were. A lot of, a lot of guys like, like it, with the Ravens, like actually with the, um, with the Ravens and Chiefs, like the coaches sat in first class, and like the vets, if they, if they wanted to, like, you know, I think like down the stretch, I could have went up there. I know Ray, um, was up there, but. Who the hell wants to sit next to the coach? Man, I was, like, like, gee, I I was just about to say, I, don't want to talk ball I sat with you, in the like... back of the plane because I oh, don't yeah. need you to tell me about the mistakes that was made that you done already told yeah. me about in the locker yeah. room after the game. And then on the bus ride to the airport, you uh, telling me about the same shit that already, I don't want to, yeah, I'm sitting in the back with the wanna, homies. So the back of the plane oh, yeah, is where, it's, where back, it's supposed man. to be. We, we don't want to. You don't want to be nowhere around no coaches. Good <laughs> yeah, at, at the win or a loss. Some you don't the... want to be nowhere around no coaches because when you lose, it's your fault. When you win, it's because of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just think they came up with the oh, we came up with this scheme. Da da da. But nah. Yeah, like, you don't, don't want to be around no coaches. coaches. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. And, and, and so what's crazy too about them planes and them rides, it's some stuff that go on where you uh-huh. like, you be like, oh man, come on, man. When, and back then too, we had them video, them, them yeah. video monitors, you can flip them up and you can put it in your own DVDs. Oh, yeah, some, of the, DVDs. some of the things that them dudes, <laughs> like, man, man. Oh, man, what you doing? <laughs> man. <laughs> you, hey, Cesar, you know exactly man. what I'm talking about. You're like, yo. <laughs> Yo, Yo, man, what you doing? It don't even matter. You're getting ready to like, get you know, into trouble. Flight attendant walking right down the thing. They walking right the down. They look, they, movie they, off. Like, look, nah, I'm Ray like, Sizzle, like, they walking oh. right down the aisle, and you done turned it to, I'm like. On the plane. On the yeah. plane. On the plane, man. On the man. plane, man. You sitting there, you going, come on. But obviously, we're a different climate now mm-hmm. than we were 10, yeah. 15 years ago. So it's a little bit different. Times are different. Nowadays. 
Man, that, yeah. hey, it's so great catching up with you, Suggs. Man, I, I really appreciate you joining this podcast and, and being a part of what we're trying to do here at Fox. Uh, I appreciate you again. Join me next week as we continue to put out amazing podcasts right here, all facts, no breaks. Till next week, deuces. Deuces.